Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. In California, a striking solar heated home inspired by a tomato farmer. Not only does it make our roof last longer, it actually stays cooler. And in London, a rundown factory that's been recycled into a light filled super home. I saw it first, and then Julie and I came around and I said, Well, that's it, what do you think? She said, Yes. So she's a genius. I'm Emmanuel Bellavo. Come with me on world's greenest homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. Our first home has two halves. A modest 1920s bungalow on one side, and on the other, a sleek new addition. And check out the solar panels, not hidden away on the roof, but a giant canopy draped over the top and down the sides. And big enough to slim down the owner's energy bills by 90%. I'm on my way to Venice Beach, California. This is one of LA's funkier neighborhoods, and it's a place where people know how to take advantage of the hot California sun. Less than a mile away from the beach sits a neighborhood of 1920s bungalows that are big on charm, but small in space. But one house stands out from the crowd. It's a vintage Spanish style bungalow that's been transformed into a modern masterpiece. And they did it without ever having to demolish the original building. Architects Larry Scarpa and Angela Brooks live here with their son Calder. The bungalow side of this home has an open concept kitchen and dining room. And off that, an office, bedroom, and bathroom. Behind the old bungalow is the other half of this home. A new two-story addition with a spacious living room that opens out onto a garden. A perforated staircase leads to more open space upstairs in the master bedroom and bathroom. Hello. Hello, Larry. Nice to meet you, man. Hi, Angie. Thank you for having yeah. me. It's great. So this is the original bungalow side? This is the original bungalow side. We remodeled the existing bungalow, and then we added on the new part to the back two-story addition. You just came through our original front door. And now there's a second front door on the addition side of the house, as this property is what's known as a through lot. It has an improved street on both sides, and therefore we have two front yards rather than a front yard and a rear yard. And most architects will tell you that if you have two front yards, that's better because you don't have a rear yard setback. So you're actually allowed to build more. The result of knocking through the back of the bungalow and building the addition is to triple the size into a 1900 square foot home with those two front doors. It's kind of funny now because we have uh, pre-remodel and post-remodel friends and the ones before all still come through here. Uh, okay. And our new front door is all our new friends. My son still, when we say, can you answer the door? He's like, which one? Because <laughs> <laughs> it depends if it's an old friend or a new right. friend, right? So he's still not sure which side is the front and the back. So why not just keep things simple and build something from scratch? When we bought the property, it was considered a teardown. But when we looked at it, being both architects, we saw it had some value. Right, right. And so rather than tear it down, we remodeled it. We saved quite a bit of money doing so. So let's start at the beginning, behind the bookshelves that divide the two properties in the 1920s bungalow. Now the original house starts right here. That's correct. This was the original house built in 1924. We've taken out all the walls in this area, so now it's become one large room. And Larry and Angela have recycled just about anything they can get their hands on. This is called Homosote. It's okay. actually a recycled newsprint. It's like a suede almost. Yeah, and you've put OSB. OSB on the floor. Yeah, oriented strand board, and it's wood chips that are just all glued together in the same direction. OSB isn't to everyone's taste, but Larry saw its potential. He experimented with sanding off the top layers and found that it has a beautiful core. And I've had people ask me, 
where do you get that OSB? You know, the only OSB I can find is with the big giant the deal, flakes. The chips off like that. And I'd say, oh, we had it specially made, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you ask me, I'll, I'll send you some. Uh, a little more expensive than the usual stuff, but I'll get some for you. But not everything was changed when the original house was renovated. What did you actually keep in this space as far as structure is concerned? All of these main structure we kept had a lot of termite damage, so we had to do some replacement, but the structure was in pretty good shape. And the stucco, we just sandblasted it and recolor coated. You were able to keep some of the original stucco? Yeah, from the 1920s, believe it or not. My son's room is actually the only room that remained intact. The office area, has been remodeled, but the shape of the room was pretty much the same. Okay. And uh, this is a new bathroom behind here, but the wall did jog this way. Is this a window? It's a window into the bathroom. It's like a privacy screen and you get borrowed light. These balls are actually used for oil spill cleanups. They throw them into the ocean and the oil collects around them and they vacuum them up and shoot them back out. Well, how'd you think to use that for that purpose? We're always looking for materials that you can get privacy, but also right. light through. Right, and, and not using the same old thing, not just getting smoked glass. Larry and Angela's Florida roots are evident in the architecture of this house. But what really makes it California is blurring inside and out. And nowhere is that more obvious than the living room in the new addition. Look at that. Yeah, this is the main element that makes our house truly Californian. You can really get the outside coming in. Yep, and I think that's really what's unique to California. We have such a great climate. If you don't do this, it's like ignoring the, yeah. the yeah. best thing that you have. And Larry and Angela don't want all that precious inside-outside space cluttered up. My husband and I both believe in a lot of um, built-in furniture, things that do dual duty. So for instance, couches that are built into the wall. Our bookcase actually is a wall that becomes the door to the guest bathroom, which turns into the cabinet that holds our TV, which also turns into the front door of the house. And this is all hidden behind one flat wall. And leading up to the second level, Larry Slimline barely there staircase. And these stairs are great. Yeah, this I the, love this corrugated metal. What, what's with the uh, the holes? Yeah, it allows the light and air to come through. As you can see here, we have uh, sliding doors that, you know, let the ventilation come right through the house and goes right through the stair. In fact, the whole house was designed to use natural airflow and cross ventilation. That means there's no need for energy guzzling air conditioning. This is gorgeous up here. It's so roomy and airy. It's our bedroom, bathroom, it's one room. It's very open. We did the wall of uh, yeah, brushes. Yeah, what is that? It acts like a privacy screen. That's how they make brooms. And we had a company actually retool their equipment so that they could run these long bristles for us. And so it gives us some privacy up here, but also creates an interesting texture as yeah, well. It is an interesting texture. But some people might say the open concept idea has been taken a tad too far. And this is your, oh wow. This is the tub. It's all built in as part of the room. This is great, and all the built in here, which just. This is all our closets, it yeah. stores everything. It's a lot of storage in here. And Larry and Angela can use as much hot water as they want in the bathroom as their energy bills have been slashed. All thanks to the California climate. Larry spent $34,000 putting in his solar panels. These panels make 90% of his energy needs for this home. And that translates, get this, into a yearly cost of only $500. That's amazing. And so was the fact a tomato farmer was the inspiration for the shape of the panels. Well, what inspired your look, your design? We were inspired by one place in particular called the Umbrella House by Paul Rudolph. The great thing that he did was he went to a local farmer and he bought tomato steaks from the farmer and he built this trellis over the house which he referred to as the umbrella and so, so we right so we instead of the umbrella house ours is the solar umbrella the panels cover the whole roof it shades our porch and not only does it make our roof last longer it actually stays cooler the panels actually wrap down over to the south side of the house and so you can not just see the front side of the panels but also the back side of the panels and we thought that's really quite beautiful
What would you say is your philosophy towards green design? Well, the, the most important thing that you can do is to make your building passively work to make it efficient from a passive point of view for the orientation, how you treat the glass, how you shade things. All of those things really reduce your consumption dramatically. And so what we try to do is bring that consumption level way down. And if you think about it, buildings last for 70 years, 80 years, 100 years. And if you design a bad building, it's going to be bad for a hundred years. <laughs> so get it right Not the first time. five years, yeah, yeah. right? So it's yeah. the most important thing you can do is make it efficient from the start. Green design is really a matter of ethics, you know, something that we should be doing. We should all be doing it. So, you know, I think what's happened is it's kind of inspired people to say, well, maybe green is not a hard thing, it's not a bad thing, and that, you know, it's, it's something that is achievable and still make good architecture. Larry and Angela have gone for more sleek, simple design for the outside space. And I love the pool. It's a very yeah. small pool. It's five feet deep and uh -huh. it's all solar heated. To heat a pool is very, very expensive these days. But with the solar panels, it keeps it at a nice temperature most of the year. Your landscaping seems very specific. What have you done here as far as making it green? Well, if you notice, we have very little impervious surfaces. So, so all the pea stone everywhere. Right, the gravel, the grass, it's mostly permeable. The soil in California, it's mostly clay. Right. And so what you're supposed to do is divert all your storm water to the street. Well, the end result of that is it winds up in the ocean. Right. So by having less surface that has runoff to the street, it soaks into the ground and it naturally cleans the water and it doesn't wash trash from the street into the ocean. Right. Essentially, when it rains here, the beach is closed for the next couple days because it's Not just, bad. you cannot swim in it. Aside from saving a bundle, what has Larry learned about designing the sleek green home? You know, people don't realize the house is that green. So what I really like is that people like the house, they enjoy it. They don't like it because they know it's a green house. They like it for the architecture and for the space and the way it's laid out. It can be a great place to live. It can also be a beautiful place as well. I just love what Larry and Angie have done with their home. By preserving existing bungalow, they minimize your new construction costs, and they've shown us a prime example of what green renovation can look like. Our next home is in an up-and-coming area in London, where an architect and an artist saw something only they could imagine. They created a work of green design out of the most unlikely building, and they milked it for all it's worth. We're in Peckham in South London. It's a working class neighborhood chock full of Victorian row housing. Until you get to this. A colorful eco masterpiece created by artist Julia Mannheim and her architect partner, Ken Taylor. This 3,300 square foot live workspace has an open concept living dining area. Ken's architecture practice is in an office next door. Off the hallway is the library. And the kitchen. Up the staircase, there's a surprise. Four beach huts. The first is the guest bedroom. The second, the TV room. And the master bedroom and bathroom are inside the last huts. But this house isn't all it seems. Believe it or not, it was once an abandoned milk depot. It sat forgotten for years until Julian Ken spotted its potential and recycled the whole thing, including the milk jugs, saving tons of stuff going into landfill. I saw it first, and then Julian and I came around and I said, well, that's it, what do you think? She said, yes. So she's a genius. <laughs> when we first got the building, it had really no presence to the street. It wasn't very nice to look at. It was just a very plain A-frame kind of building, um, single story, and it didn't really give anything to the street. So by putting the gallery here, the gallery window, we wanted to give something back to the street, 
and similarly with this um, planter to put something green there. Inside, it's obvious that their imagination has run wild. Ken and Julia have experimented with just about anything they can get their hands on. First off, the main living dining space. We've brought a material which you normally would find outside, inside. This material is from the roof, and the bitumen where they patch the roof makes these really nice abstract patterns. But why stop at exposed steel walls? Look up and there's a lot more steel. We've planned the staircase so that it doesn't block out the light. We've tried to make it of that grid material so that it's letting more light in. The staircase is built around the roof trusses. The stairs are made so that you go through the trusses. We're going over the trusses at the optimum height for a person to walk over them. That's why they go up and down. And for those grey English winters, they've invested in a few bits of artwork to brighten things up. Here, there's an amazing piece by a German artist, Sarah Winter. It's a light box and it's all to do with milk and the fact that this place was a, a milk depot. <laughs> Off the main living space is Ken's office. This has got lots of kind of reused bits in it as well. Um, this whole piece here does fold back, so there is a lot of flexibility in here. And he's come up with a few unconventional ideas for lighting. And we're in this kind of light hub here. It's made of polycarbonate sheets, so you get light all the way around. If it's a Saturday night and we've got people around for dinner, the whole thing becomes a nice kind of glowing box. Along the hallway, Ken and Julia have done another great transformation job. The Old Depot's original cold storage space is now a colorful kitchen. The worktops are made of recycled plastic and it's just edged in an aluminium. And what we've done is put a sort of low-key, more natural look to the bottom of it. That's the birch ply there. You can see they just sort of stand the things. They, they work quite, quite nicely. We get the sunlight in in the morning first thing in the morning comes, comes slanting in here, which is so nice. Didn't do that before. Well, that's the other thing is that about the building is all the internal doors have all been moved around, but they are existing doors because we want to keep the kind of existing quality of these. I mean, what Julia's saying about the light, you can just catch it on there. You know it's an old door. But going industrial with your design ideas doesn't always make for comfort. These are the contradictions of the sort of eco world, is that we've got this wonderful floor, which was in the cold store, but obviously there's no insulation underneath it. We don't want to cover it up, but it is slightly cold. Next door to the kitchen is the library and home to Ken's favorite piece of furniture, a reupholstered chair. It's by a designer called Matthew Hilton. It's got this lovely fabric on it from Scotland, and it's an English oak frame nice reading chair. And it sits on more of that reclaimed floor. This is a floor which is ash felt with these bits of metal kind of stuck into it. And what we've done is we've just put a very simple metal paint over which is silver, which just kind of makes the room lighter. Upstairs, Julia and Ken didn't hold back with their design ideas. And yes, those really are beach huts. The idea behind the beach huts was that it's quite an oddity in Peckham, but actually we're not that far away from the seaside, so it kind of makes sense. They're western red cedar, which is a beautiful material that doesn't need any maintenance at all. The beach huts are the proportion that goes between the, these metal trusses, which are the original trusses. And that has defined what kind of size they can be. They're the structure of the building, so we wanted to keep it, because otherwise the whole building fall down. There are four huts. The first one, the guest bedroom. And the second is the TV room.
The master bedroom and bathroom are inside the third and fourth huts. It's built outside, so it's almost like you're in a kind of tree house with all these windows. The floor is randomly sawn so that it's just getting the most out of big sheets of ply. It makes a kind of nice feel and a nice pattern. The blonde wood floor complements the soft ice cream colors used throughout the huts. A cheeky reminder of the building's former life as a milk depot. This one must be mint. And the cool colors continue into the master bathroom. We've got a nice, enormous bath so that two people can sit in it together and one of them doesn't have to have the tap or anything. <laughs> and there's all the privacy they need thanks to etched windows. When you're sitting in our nice, generous bath, you can just look out and see a bit of sky or a bit of tree. The next hut is the TV room, where Julia also stores her keepsakes. We have quite sort of more intimate things in here, and that's a, a heart made of seed packets. So it's like giving flowers or the potential for flowers to somebody, which I actually gave to Ken as a valentine. Outside, there's more creative use of rough and ready industrial materials. And then this is cotton steel, which rusts immediately that it's put on. So it's just a cladding, but then it rusts to this lovely, rich, orangey color, and it doesn't rust any further after that. So if you can make rust look good, why not push the envelope further? Believe it or not, this is their backyard fence. We wanted it to be a bit more private and we're thinking about recycling things. Obviously it was an old milk depot and we thought, well, what could be better? And so this has become a community project where um, everybody's been chucking these plastic bottles over. It's dual purpose, great for the environment and meeting your neighbors. But the home's most standout feature is this translucent wall. It's made of glass reinforced plastic the material was used in garage doors on industrial products and that's where we saw it. And what this does is it just ambiently heats up this wall here, which is a kind of solid wall. As you gradually come up this staircase, it gets warmer and warmer. If you want to conserve heat, maybe a translucent wall like Julia and Ken's is your answer. They built their wall by harnessing a steel structure the top of an existing brick and cement wall. The glass reinforced plastic panels then just snap into place. The sun then flows through the translucency heating the outer wall. That in turn heats the cavity of air and the inner wall, creating a type of heat sink. But it's at night when this house really shines. The translucent panels turn this home into a light lantern and the neighborhood's ultimate party space. We love the space. It's our interest in space. At the end of the day, this home is a perfect mix of industrial meets ingenuity. Now, Ken and Julia really did create a work of art. The fact that they built a showcase home out of an old condemned milk depot makes transformation all the more impressive. Now that's forward thinking green design.